And now, your mama knows. Throughout history, to this day, they're still fucking doing it to a certain extent. They're just doing it politically. Why isn't there a stigma about them that say, hey, this white person, uh, let's pull them over and kill the shit out of them. Well, it's it, it's funny because it's funny that you say that because obviously there's a lot of a lot of support, a lot of stuff going on, on social media. I've read a lot of memes, but the one that really caught my attention was one that said, and I feel like it almost feeds to against Anthony's point to where it says, if I can remember it correctly, was they're the lucky, huh? No, I just said I've seen a lot of uh, memes and stuff on social media, but the one that caught my eye the most was one that said, "The lucky, all we want is equality and not revenge." Exact. True. Exact. Because this could be a very different um, situation right now. Yeah, I, I got, I got, I got two things I want to touch on. I'm going to ask y'all a question this morning. It took, now, we all know the situation going on down in Minnesota, right? Minneapolis. It took them burning down half the city to get this cop arrested. Now, let's touch on this. Let's reverse those roles. If that was a black cop with his knee on a white man, would it have taken any riot or protest to get that cop arrested? And why? Check this out. I, I might not agree with you on that to a certain extent. It didn't take the protest to get him arrested. What it what it took was due process, right? So they probably would have dragged their feet on it, beat around the bush, and maybe they said, "You know, put this information out now and, and put it out there." But that riot was going to happen regardless, Fact. right? Because the people already trying to like spin it and do damage control was trying to say, "Oh, it's justified. It's this or that." The riot wasn't he because didn't take he didn't get arrested I'm right away. Like because you're not going to, nobody's going to get charged immediately. Right? And think about this. He was charged within days, which is the norm. He was charged within days. What people were really mad about was the charges he got. Yeah, third degree and man's third degree. That's, That's bullshit. First degree. People were pissed that he didn't get first or second degree. And and Franco, you, if I can just touch on the riots real quick, I've been keeping up with the news, and this is what's fucking with me. Because, hey, also, Justin, I'm sorry, you are really, really low. All right, hold on. You sound fine to me. To try turning him up for you. You sound fine. I got everybody. Well, he's driving right now, so I don't know if he'll be able to do that. Well, that's bad. No, I can hear everybody else, but I can't hear you. You might like, have to turn him up, but like, what you know, what else? You're, you're a little low, too, uh, Julian. I'm always low. Oh, Julian always low. That's just his thing. Yeah, Julian's always low. But but here's what I was saying, right? Like, if those roles were reversed, that black officer would have been in jail that night, no questions asked. I doubt it, because he was, he was a cop. Yeah, yeah, but he but he but he killed a white person. I think first he would be in jail that same day. First thing cops do is circle the wagons, and then IED comes in. He would not have been arrested that same night. If anything, there would have been an immediate investigation more so. Yeah, it'd have been it'd probably have been sped up a lot faster. Faster than two to three days. That's normal due process. Here's my thing. I'm, I'm with this shit that's going on right now. I'm very fit because enough is enough. But one thing you can't do is you can't use your own version of racism to try to justify other racism. racism. Yeah. You uh, can't say, hey, if he was black, this would have happened. Especially if the shit is baseless and not true. What? You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem. Like, we quick to say shit like that. But we not quick to really follow through and research the shit. 
just like what I was going to say about the first and second degree, everybody was pissed he didn't get first and second degree, but first and second degree murder is tricky to prove. It's very tricky to prove. Uh, first degree advice. murder yeah. requires first degree murder requires intent, which means he would have had to show up on the scene with the intent of killing George Floyd, which is impossible. We don't know that man. What's that, what's that, what's that man said? I'm sorry, oh, bro. What's that man said? I cannot breathe, and he continued to choke him. That intent was right now, there. Now, okay, okay now. now that's what should have led to second degree murder. Second degree, because that's we, called We reckless. went and then looked up the laws for that, for, for the laws for that area for it. There's only three states right now that actually have a third degree law, murder law. It's Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Now, and I went and looked up last night, because we were talking about this last night on the Pants Off podcast. I went and looked up their law for third-degree murder is whatever. It was like you killed somebody by doing an action that could possibly harm somebody, but unintentionally killed them in the process. But according to their law, even let's say somebody goes out and shoots a pregnant lady right now. Didn't know they were pregnant. They're going to get a second-degree murder charge for the unborn child, but not a third-degree one. A second degree, just for the unborn child, just for not knowing that she's pregnant. But you can knowingly, like everybody just said, you heard the man say, I can't breathe. So you know you're doing something to harm him and cut off his life, his air support. Yes, that and right there. Not third degree. By doing that, you should have based it. That right there should have gotten second degree, period. Exactly. That's the biggest problem that everybody has with it. Exactly. Besides, like another, another question is, why would he harm the man's neck? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chu. What you were saying? But my main question is, why were you kneeling on the man's neck? If you already had him on the floor, if you already had him cuffed, shouldn't he have been fine? True. I got you one better. They already had him in the car. Yeah. They took Isn't him, video of him out him up of the, after car they got him the car to do that. Okay, so that was so that. If if, it, if they took him out of the car to do that, then that should be first degree then. If he was already in the car, securing the handcuff, what reason did they have to take him back out? Yeah, that's what got me fucked up. What reason did they use to say that they brought him back out the car? We haven't got one yet. Because video them that video just emerged car? recently, like literally two days ago, if that. Because these cops feel like they can get away with it because it happened other times in different, in different states. They said, fuck it, if they can get away with it, I know we can. They took him out the car, their excuse is that he was acting erratic and they believed that he was either intoxicated or on some type of drug and they tried to play that line off. If you already in the fucking car and secured... Let him finish, Gene. I'm sorry. <laughs> they tried to play the line off and they kept repeating it when they realized they were being videotaped. Um, and you're right. It's, they had no reason to take him back out the car. That doesn't <laughs> change the fact that they took him back out the car and that was an abuse of power. Yes. Right? But it also, if you go by the letter of the law, unless he took him out of the car and said, hey, I'm about to kill this motherfucker. Us screaming first and second degree is only makes it circumstantial. What happens with prosecutors, when they go after that and they file these charges, they file the charges that they know they can prove. Yeah. And not the ones that they know they probably can I mean, they probably should. And then it, it turns into one of those things is, do we go for first or second degree and fail and he gets off? And he gets off. Yeah. That's, that's what happened. do we go for third degree and manslaughter and get him on something? And you know the stick. Lawyer, I'm a lawyer. I would have filed fucking first, second, and third and manslaughter charge because that's it's what they would have did to any regular person. They would have hit him with every charge they could and as time goes on, some of those charges fall off as they try to get the conviction or the but, plea. But There's something's also going to a chance that they can upgrade the charges still. It's not as likely to happen, but as more evidence like these videos of him getting pulled out of a car and then having the incident happen, start chopping up and there's more evidence, they might feel a little stronger having that evidence and upgrade said charges. Is it likely? I hope, like, part of you really hopes that it gets upgraded. Here's the, here's the crazy shit. What's the difference between upgrading the charge and pulling one off? If you would have hit him with them charges from the beginning, I don't think we would be looting and rioting right now. Oh, no. No. Mm -mm. 
I don't think it would have got to that point because people would have realized that, damn, they know what we feeling. They going to go after. Now, even these third degree charges and the man's like, this would just be a fucking gimme. Here, we just going to charge him, but we not going to convict him. I'm like, this. at the higher end, he may get probation. Oh no, you ain't getting probation if you found guilty for third degree or manslaughter. Oh, no, no. Jake, that you go to jail. He, 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 he's, he's, going, he's going to get a he's, he's going to get a very light sentence. Let's keep it real. He'll he's get, not going to see no significant jail time. If he gets hit with manslaughter, he can legit do five years, which ain't shit. Which is fucked up. Because that was a black cop, white guy, that man would have been facing twenty. No, oh, that, 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 you can't that, say that. You don't. You can't that, say that. that That's not no, you got, with racism that on happened. racism. Doesn't work that because, way. Because, because a couple of years oh, ago, a couple years ago, it was a black cop that shot a white woman. Oh my bad. And he got he got up to twenty years for that shoot. There you go. And I think that was probably about a couple of years ago. I had just I was just looking at that last night because a lot of people was talking about it, and they was doing comparisons, and they brought up that they brought up the. Uh, the, the the white cop, the lead female that shot Joheen Fit Bank I can't even say the man's name. Up in um New Orleans. They brought that up. They brought up the uh the black cop that shot the white woman accidentally. He she was shoot he shot his firearm and it killed her, but she wasn't an intended target. He was shooting at somebody that was shooting at him and he got charged for manslaughter. And how much time he ended up getting? He got up to um twenty years. They charged him for twenty years. I don't. I ain't never yeah. follow up and finish reading and see if he ever got convicted or whatever. But he got charged with it. So here's my question, right? Why a black man or a black officer who accused of the same crime as that officer in Minnesota or many other women hell happened that? Why are they getting more civil sentence versus their white counterparts? But you also got to you, you also got to understand that in in different states, different states' laws are different. Yeah, but it's always the same outcome no matter which state it is. But Gene, right, man, always gets higher in the beginning. Because we again, you don't know the service record of the officer. You don't know the track record. They do take those things into account. Yeah, but as time proven, it's always the African American who gets the higher end of the sentence. Hmm. Oh, that's actually good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so she could squeeze through that, mm-hmm. even with it fully closed. Oh, yeah, that's enough space for her to get through. Yo, Matt, what's up? Matt's in the chat, y'all. Hey, Matt. Hey. Oh, uh, Mike, hey, Matt said he got 12 years. He got 12? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you for confirming that for me. Appreciate it. Yeah, when you said 40, I was like, dude, it's manslaughter. I don't think so. Uh, so, Eugene. Good. Uh, wait for you to respond. So, Matt, so you, said, you said track record is a black officer would have got the higher end of the, uh, the time, but where are you comparing that to? Because at this point, I'm pretty sure we haven't had a black officer murder a white citizen and make national news like this right now, that, that I can remember. It, it, it wouldn't make mass, it, 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 wouldn't make, it wouldn't make national news. It wouldn't make national news. Of course it would. What are you talking about? Yes, it would. Think, Black cop killed white chick? Happens. Hell yeah, that would make national news. If that happens, if a black officer was to kill a white man the way they killed this man, that shit would be non-stop news coverage. It would get, like, this whole week worth of coverage. <laughs> that that, that, that would not just be national news. That would be universal news. We would have tried to counter... They would have tried to counter this murder with that murder. With that they would have said, oh, remember that black officer did that to this guy. So this is what I mean when I say I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, you literally sound like a reverse racist right now. Like you, like everybody else is giving points and we come in different ways and, and everybody has an opinion. All I'm asking is, if you're going to say something inflammatory, base that shit somewhere and stand on it. Okay. You literally just said, hey, he's black. So that's why I was fucked up. If he was a black cop, 
this would have happened. But you know what I'm saying? It's the same thing as saying, hey, we mad that they killed this man. I'm gonna go fucking rob Target. You understand where I'm coming from? Uh, definitely. So, uh, that's, like my opinion is not that, and I'm gonna, this is the last time I let smile. But my opinion is I'm not mad about them burning shit down, but burn the right shit down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I really feel like we have to focus like any yeah. people burn the police they burn that police own precinct down. Okay. Yep. I can't really be mad at you. People burning down the fucking target. I don't get it. It makes no sense. They just want they just want an excuse to loot and 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 steal. That's all they're looking for. No, I don't I don't agree with that. Look, check it. I posted mm-hmm. a video in the chat actually by Trevor Noah. He was talking about how it's like a contract between us and them. And and basically the short version of it though, it sum it up, he basically said how how can they expect us to honor the contract and not loot and not while out when they don't honor the contract by killing us. Like how can they expect us to honor that same contract when they won't? Mike walking outside in the goddamn breeze. And he, and Mike, go <laughs> put your butt down somewhere. And he, and he picked the most random time. Oh, yeah, yeah, why you want to take a walk now? What's up, Anthony? Thing. We out here like it's beautiful outside. Just look uh, at the sky. Look at the trees. Nah, I just took the garbage out. Nigga, you got the garbage out? Why the fuck you got the walk? How far away is the fucking grass? Yo, Anthony, say what's up to Matt. He's in the chat. He's in the the Twitch chat. And I cannot hear you at all, Matt Anthony. Oh, you can't hear me? There you go. Now you can. I hear you now. Oh, okay. Um, who's in the chat? You said Matt? Yeah. Oh, uh. M3's down. Matt, Matt? Yes, nigga, Matt, Matt. Matthias. Oh, that's what's up. What's up, <laughs> How Matt? How many Matt, Matt you know? Listen, I don't. The Mickey yeah. To your one point earlier, Mike, Matt said that same officer was from out of that Minnesota Police Department. Or Minneapolis, it is. So he was from Minneapolis also? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for fact checking me, Matt. See, this is why I like you, Mattius. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Anthony. Yes, sir. I just want to let you know. <laughs> I can't hear you so la- so clear, but. What happened? No, sir, I couldn't hear you that clear. My bad. I'm covering my mouth. Um, I definitely started off the conversation digging into your video. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I figure, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, like I said, if there's any time to make a video like that, it might as well be now. Which is where, where I really disagree with that statement. And, um, statement. It was a six minute video. What statement did you disagree with? <laughs> I'm to break it down. Um, just real quick, the point, I'm going to pull out some of the points I pulled out. Is um I too am from Trenton. Right. I too am forty four years old. Right. I just grew up in uh West Trenton and spent time in Dolly Homes. I grew up in Dolly Homes and just all those things. And I listen to rap music. You know, I I consider myself a tough guy. You know? But under no circumstances, under no circumstances any arena that I've ever been in in my life have I ever felt like any of those things justify any of the shit that happened to us and can speak to it and then the, the other point that I gave to them is you can go back to the 20, 30 the 40 when blacks were the most well dressed people we I was trying to think of it we were oh, it, I'm sorry, the most well-dressed people, we were owners of our own business and had our own towns and shit, and they still was beating the shit out of us, hanging us, setting our houses on fire, burning down churches and shit. So how is it you flash forward to 2020 and 
us listening to rap music, sagging pants, being tough, justifies any of this shit that's going on now. Um, I'm not saying it justifies it. What I'm saying is, you, you I and you call it tough with being black. I said what? I'm, I'm just pointing out you called it. This is the problem for us being black. Uh, well, I said the issue, but um, um, I yeah, I stand with what I said. I feel like um, when there's a lot of issues, um, is because we uh, again, I'm again, I use the rap thing as a big how I, I put it is that um, girl, when I grew up, I know rap is a little different now, but um, and I'm not into rap now, but uh, yeah, we were portrayed to be that super tough person. I mean, I remember growing up where you know somebody would just. It is what it is. Punch the white dude in the face just because. And I just feel like we try really hard, or our music try really hard to emulate that we was a savage, in, in lack of better words. And so I feel like the world always looked at, especially black men, is like, we're loose cannons, we'll do this, we'll do that. And I feel like uh, it gives people that uneasy feeling. Like, no one in here could tell me they didn't. In, 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 today, you go outside and it's real dark and a bunch of black guys coming up, you're not going to say your mind, even if it's a second of a thought, you might be like, man, here we go. Again, you know, I can speak for myself. Nobody has to agree with me. So, but that's just me being black, living in a black neighborhood. I, that I see for myself, grew up for myself, you know? Um, so that's pretty much where I want to say, I want to put it out there, but I feel like no one ever wants to top, table that subject because it takes, um, it takes ownership and people want to put the blame on other people. No one, I could say it myself. Like there was times where um, back in the day, again, everybody jumping people. I once upon a time was in jumping somebody. It was retarded, but I got in on it, you know, but can I be able to admit, like I was just trying to be one of the guys doing what we do. I was, you know, but people oh, don't want to take that ownership. You know, people don't want to be like, yeah, I mean, you know, the, when, when back in the day, black people was kind of a little rowdy, and we did just hook off on somebody and do stuff. Nobody wants to say that, you know. So I took it and said it myself. Anybody could disagree. That's just my opinions, but that's also my experience. I've seen it. I lived it. So if you know, no, nobody has to say they did it. Also, if you're gonna I speak, Mike, it. unmute yourself first. But and but and last question: How can rap music take away accountability for one's actions? What do you mean? You basically said rap music is a cause or the betrayal of how black people act in society. So, with that said, right, mm -hmm. how can it take away your I'll wait till Eugene's of, done. of your um, actions? Oh, I don't know what you're saying. How could... basically, basically, let's say I go out and commit a crime, right? Right. I did that. I own it. Can I blame what I listen to for me going out and doing it? No, what I was saying um, was the way people look okay, at you. Matt, what I was saying um, is rap me. Let's see. Uh, Are you on your phone? Matt is trying to jump in, and I definitely want okay. him in here for this. Um, I got you, Justin. I'll send him the link in the chat. Thank you. Fun. Thank you, Ken. Tech support. Love it. Can, 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 I, can I say something now? Can I'm going to send him the link well, to your Discord, answer, so it'll be easier answer, there. Uh, let me just answer Eugene's question. Okay. Um. So my my... My video was on how we're being looked at. That's what my video was. I'm not saying what you actually do. Listen, we're all individuals, so what you actually do is on you. But what I'm saying is how we're being viewed. That's what I wanted to get on. Um, because there's so many times where something happens, and it's because people have this image in their mind, specifically of black men. So what I was doing was saying, I believe that a, a big view that people have of black men have of us is because the way we look, the way we speak, and you know, and also the way the world views us, especially for like when I was growing up, NWA, F the police. I mean, Eugene, you got slammed up on the car for saying F the police. So I feel like it literally, it's like that's, it's, it's just crazy, but that's what we, you know, a lot of people look at us and feel like we're known for being the person that's gonna walk out of club saying F the police, you know? Okay, um, this is where I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to dispute that. Right. Oh, I just, I what Eugene did that. was an individual. Well, yeah. Action. What about Mike? Why well, don't Mike say something? Right, go ahead, Mike. Been, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to touch back to what Anthony was saying 
about appearances. And I want to also touch on what Franco said earlier before you had jumped in. Now, before all of this, fuck the police and all this and images of how we are portrayed, this was going on way before. This was this was no different. Like he said, back in the 20s, back in the 30s, back in the 40s, back in the 50s, we had our own establishment. We dressed it fine. It did not change nothing. Fuck the police and stuff came because of result of that. That was our mentality towards them because how we got treated by them. Now, this has nothing to do with about how our image is because they was doing this way before. And they was doing it then. They still won't be doing it now. And I hope they won't be doing it in the future. But it just shows how they've been doing us. So it's saying by images or nothing. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, I come outside. I got dreads. I got dookie braids. I got cornrows. My pants is saggy. I'm walking around my pants off my ass. They're going to look at me like, oh, well, that's like, well, guess what? When we had the image of a different approach with suits and ties, they did not respect that then. And they don't respect it now. They still going to look at us as thugs. The images that they get and portray is the image that they put out there of us because they don't want us looking like we are businessmen, we're smart, we're intellectual. They want us to look like we are thugs. That's what they put out there for us to look like, even though half of us is not like that. I, I got braids in my hair now, and I will walk down there, and I would get the same response from a person if I came out there with my fresh cut, no beard, and a suit. They would still look at me and cross the street because in their mind, it has already been established to I them. I just sent you a friend request on Discord, Matt. That, now, that I hey, am the problem. Now, I Mike, let me, let me add to that, Mike. Everyone knows what I do for a living, right? Everybody here knows what I do for a living, right? Y'all know what happened to me a couple years ago in Raj and Val. Where oh, I, got, wow. I got pulled over in my bus. The officer came up to my bus, opened the door. He asked me, what am I doing with this bus? He made me prove that I worked for the company I work for. As if I'm just going to put on my uniform and just go steal a damn bus. What reason did that cop had to pull me what, over? What, 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 you were you weren't dressed like a thug or had your pants sagging? Nope. I was in my uniform. And what, and what did you wear at work? I wore my white shirt, tie, like khakis, and okay. I still got treated like I didn't have that shit on. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you mentioned that. Yeah, hey, I mean, I, I, I want to touch on that also because um, right. well, I work, I wear a uniform, I have a badge. It may not be a police badge, but I have a badge, and yes, it has a number that you could go and report it by. It 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 does nothing. It does nothing because when I'm driving in my car, they're not looking at my uniform. They're looking at a black man. It was a black off duty cop. I think this was like sometime last year. He got pulled over and they had a bunch of other cars followed behind him and he was sitting there trying to explain to him he's an off duty officer. They arrested him, they processed him, and when they got him there and his credentials came back, they still didn't apologize to the man. So hey. it has. It, 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 it's it's not. I I, I, I want to agree with you because it's your opinion, and you are entitled to your opinion. Everybody's entitled to an opinion because everybody's life experience is different from everybody's different point of view in their eyes. So I understand what you're saying. I I can see that, but at the same time, it's still like ninety five percent of us that still experience a different effect. All right, hold on, well, real quick, Mike. What's up? Wait, Kim? here's the thing. I think hold what on, you guys are Matt doing. Hold on. What's up, Kim? Okay. Perfect example. Neither you nor Justin or anybody in this group has really ever worn that thugged out gear, correct? No. Yeah, no. Okay. What? Okay. Okay, listen. I'm not talking about that. So, what about when we would drive out to New Egypt and I was driving and we would get pulled over and they would ask me if I'm okay simply because I'm in the car with black guys? Facts. Uh, that, happened, that happened to uh, me plenty of times being yeah, but listen, it happened to us how many times did you get pulled black, over out well, there just me, for being black yeah, let, me let me say something though. Like let, let me say something you guys what you're doing is you're taking my video and you're talking about racism right what my video was saying is that there are moments where we don't want to talk about that we literally because of the way we speak 
or dress, we kind of do it to ourselves, whether it's black or white. Okay. And I put this so in the video. With you, that... So what you guys are doing, hold on, wait. You guys are literally, because uh, if not last week or whenever, the, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Franco said pretty much what's in the video. Franco said, I'm not the person that's going to get pulled over and be like, yo, officer, and I'm going to be acting crazy and dressing a certain type of way. He literally said that. And if you want, I could go find it. So that's pretty much what I'm saying. What he actually said, that's what I'm saying, is we don't often and it was cool when he said that and i gave him a lot of credit i'm like that's cool he said it because often a black guy don't want to admit that sometimes our appearance and our actions get us in trouble and that's literally what he said out his own mouth and that's literally what my video was you guys are taking my video and throwing racism on top of it i specified in my video but even I, it's black on black stuff but it's the problem is we're not accepting that sometimes that we actually make things harder for ourselves. So don't you're taking my video and just trying to say well, it's the it's black it's black what make things harder on ourselves. Say that again. So the only way to make things easier on ourselves is not be black. That's that. Listen, bro. If you that's that's not what I'm saying. But if that's what you're saying, that's, that's fine. What were, that's what you were implying. No, because what I'm saying is that a white person could could could. Uh, dress the same way you know could act the same way what i'm saying is is for a black person when we're dressing a certain way and acting a certain way even black people look at us some type of way they get this impression and then they think they could prejudge us but we could not we could not be that type of person but from our appearance and our speech as franco even alluded to in a video before um you know it's a good point he made he made that same point so, I mean, you, but you guys are throwing racism on it. You're saying that this bit, like Mike said, this happened in the fifties and twenties. That That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about us taking accountability for the times where our appearance and speech put us in trouble or make our someone appearance, prejudge us. Our appearance, our appearance should never, our appearance and speech should not judge us, should not judge our character. And that's why, and that's how, listen, let me tell you something. I have kids, you got kids, and I'm being real. And that's my, pro, that's my point exactly. People aren't taking that, people, and that's why it's not talked about. Because you said, the black guy say that, you don't want to hear it. You don't want to, you don't want to take the accountability. But like Franco said, I'm not going to be the guy talking about I know my rights and acting crazy to the officer. He's just going to, you know, just like I said before, me and Justin, I got out the car, hugged the white girl, cop pulled up, gave me a ticket. You know what I did? I didn't act crazy. I didn't act like they would think I would act, right? I just went to court, and they didn't show up. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. So, so what you're saying? So what you're saying, Anthony, wait, 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 is that wait. what is happening? I think we got Matt in the building. Is, I, I, I got a question though. Is hold on. So, let, me, let me say this real quick. What you're saying with that? Because with that statement, it sounds a lot like what you're saying is, it's our fault. We get treated the way we get treated, and this is like brand new. It's like the 20th century. Hello. What's your question? Basically, what you're saying is we only get treated how we're treated because of how we look and act, and this is brand new to the 20th century. Like we were never treated like this beforehand. Exactly. Uh, hello, can you guys hear me? Well, like, let me, yeah. Matt, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Welcome to the chat, man. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, uh, I didn't take what Ant's statement that way. I, I, I took it more along the lines of if you were given this. I don't know if you guys ever got to talk, but. My mom did give me the talk about getting pulled over, uh, you know, like, uh, don't, like, don't be act a fool, turn your car off, like, calm down, you know, don't be nervous, and, you know, hopefully you don't get beat up. But, yeah, no, we this, I feel like we've all had that conversation from our parents at least one point. I'm not saying... Like, like, at the end of the day, fellas and ladies, race is always going to be a determining factor of why we treat it as such. I was going to say... Because at that point, from your statement, Aunt, then when do the people who came up with all these stereotypes about black people get held accountable? Listen, it's any listen. Anybody can be uh, should be held accountable for whatever they, however they are, however they think. Like I didn't. So let, first of all, let me ask you this: Who in here watched my video? No, I, first of all, who in here did not watch my video? I watched all. I, did, I watched the whole thing. Talking about it. Because I feel like if. You guys didn't watch the video, then don't speak on it. Don't act, you know, because I feel like it's not fair. They, but if you yeah, did watch the video, talking, yeah, they watched it. You know what? Hold on, hold on, because this is what's happening. This is what's happening right now. Um, 
Anthony has a polarizing opinion, and that's fine. He's welcome to it. I watched your video, Anthony, and you know what I honestly got from your video? For me, it didn't move the needle either way. That's your opinion, and it has zero to do with what actually happened, and we're getting off topic. It's true because it really does. Opinion, like I think people are watching my video to do. People are wa with what actually what, happened. So we need. Yeah, to people like are watching my video and making it like I'm saying um, George Floyd uh, deserves to get killed because he had a black uh, a, a white beater on or something. I think you guys are taking it and and I literally spelled it out in the video. So I never said I never said um, what's going on right now shouldn't be happening and. Oh, you know, we deserve everything we get. What I'm just saying is one okay. thing that we never talk about is that the moments where something happened to us personally because we was quote unquote um, You're talking about accountability. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're and I just feel like no, And I agree with I, that's why I say I'm not against that. I agree with you that fact that a lot of us don't take accountability for our own actions. But I was also just stating the fact that even though we do not portray that for some of those that don't portray that image, we still get treated as such. And and guess and what? There, be yes, there are. That. And Mike, there are some racist white people, racist black people, racist Korean people. Yes, there are people out there that's racist, but that's not what I'm talking about. So yeah, I agree with you too. You could be dressed up in a suit. Me, I usually dress up. I usually like to wear a blazer and shoes. And someone, there could be a racist cop that pulled me over and say I did something. But there also could be a cop that's not racist and could be white and may not prejudge me a certain way because of how I'm dressed or how I respond back to the officer. Again, just like Franco said in a couple of videos ago, and I'll make sure I go find it. But like he said, listen, that stuff ain't gonna happen to me because I don't act a certain way. I don't get out of out of character, out of pocket when I get pulled over. So that that's all that I was saying the same thing as what he said. Oh, so from the sound of it, you were trying to make a good point. It's just it's probably case you probably made the video a bad time just because of all the things that are going on and a lot of people are gonna Hey Frank, no one can hear you, dog. Something. What you can't hear me? Yeah, no, um no. wherever your yeah. phone is, if you can move it so we can get to the microphone. Now him and Julia was talking at the same time, so Julia. But that came didn't help any Mike Hutch. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, Franco. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, now. we can now. Yeah. yeah, now we hear you now, dude. Let me, I just want to stop you before you try to tie in what I said a couple videos ago. Because what I was referring to was the fact that I don't, when the cops pull me over, I don't freak the fuck out on them. We were talking about people who freak the fuck out on cops when they pull them over. That was the topic. That was that topic. That doesn't tie into this topic. And the other part is, I wasn't tying what you said into the George Floyd situation either. I was just talking about the fact that you broke it down in a way that the reason why shit happens to us the way it happens is how I interpreted it was because of certain things that are portrayed by our race, right? And you're saying, like, we have to take accountability because we sag our pants and we listen to gangster rap music and we are raised to be tough. So because of that, when shit happens to us, we need to accept the fact that maybe it happened because we sag our pants, we listen to rap music, and we're tough. But on, on the same token of that, then maybe we need to, when shit needs to happen to us like when we dress really nice and we open businesses and we give the world, the world music and culture, maybe they should be like, treating us really, really good because we've done more of that than we've done the next. You know what I'm saying? And then what I actually said to them was if you base it on the way a race acts and you gave a blanket statement like this is what you kind of well shit. The white race has plundered plundered every other race they've encountered for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Not my opinion, historical event proves it. You know what I'm saying? Not my opinion, historical event proves it. You're, but. And hold on, let me finish because you, you had this say. Right. And it's not trying to, I'm not trying to change your opinion. I'm just trying to make you understand that you blanket statement us 
and the rates, and you literally said, hey, don't listen. You basically said, hey, maybe if we didn't listen to games and rap or portray, we didn't put our games and rap music, and we weren't tough people, and, you know, we didn't dress a certain way, shit wouldn't happen as what it happened. But on the flip side, when you said you seen that shit happen when you was young, I could be walking through a neighborhood, and if I see a crowd of white dudes walking towards me, I'm going to be on edge. If I'm walking through a neighborhood and I see a crowd of Asian dudes walking through me, I'm going to be on edge. So if I walk through the hood and I see a crowd of black dudes walking towards me, I'm going to be on edge. Natural defensive response. You know what I'm saying? It ain't got nothing to do with my race. And it just, it hurt me. And I think I said it on your on your video, if you see my comments. I love you, Jeff, and I understand your point of view. But it hurt me to see another black person say, hey, if you get treated fucked up because you're black, well, this is what you shouldn't have been doing as a race. And I know there's going to be people who are going to watch your video who are not of our race, and they're going to say, huh. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> Just, he gets it. Listen, listen. So you, Anthony, I want to say something yeah. really quick. So yeah. you can kind of look at it from a different perspective and understand it's kind of the same thing that everybody's saying, all right? I'm a female. If I dress with, like, cleavage showing, tight pants, and go out in public, and I get raped, <laughs> is it my fault because of the clothes I was wearing that I got raped? Fuck no. no. No, definitely not at all. But you okay. can see but But yes, I understand. But that's like that's a big point, especially with 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 the rape culture right now is oh, it wouldn't have happened if she didn't have cleavage showing. Right. Or it you wouldn't have I mean? happened it, it, if it does it, here's the thing. It's the thing. It's like the it's like the racist guy and it could be the rapist guy, right? So yeah. you got people who aren't racist, you got people who are racist, you got people who aren't rapists, and you got people that that are rapists so certain things trigger certain people so it's mm -hmm. kind of it's it sucks because yeah you're a female you wear the cleavage shirt and if something happened it's like no that it shouldn't have happened period but you could i could see if somebody want to argue well what do you mean she was walking around with a dress on with no drawers on she bent over and showing everybody at the club like that doesn't excuse what happened but you can lead the conclusion of why it did happen. No, what I'm this saying is, is no, no, it doesn't no, work no. that way. But the victim, victim this the victim blaming. Yes, and this is my point. Right. Does it happen? Yes. Is it right? No. And right. in the same sense, it, it's terrible that you cannot listen to or quote unquote dress the way you want or listen to what you want and do your own business and have people not make instant judgment calls about you. And, and that's it's sad. Sucks. That's the truth. And it's a it's a truth that is happening. Right. And so I see where you're coming from with your video. And I see right. that yes, a lot of people do make those judgment calls just based on the way people act. Is it right? right? No. But it's also the way it came across in your video, even with the point you made at the end, is you're trying to make a blanket statement. And I know that's not your intent. Your delivery intent was off. Is, it, it's Don't not. I know that's not what you want. To, to say, and I'm telling you how it came across because I literally, when I heard Justin talking about the video, before I heard anybody's opinion about it, I count out, asked Justin, I got out of the call and I went and watched your video so I could see what everybody was talking about because I didn't, you know, I know I got your message about the video, I just hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. No, I got you. So I went and watched it and I sat there and I'm like, man, and I sat there and I was thinking it, I was like, yeah. And then, all honesty, I get your point, I understand where you're coming from and you're allowed to have it, but. Not only is it coming across as a blanket statement, and it's it's a message that needs to come out, but at this moment in time, I don't think it's the right time for that message because it's making it seem like you're trying to connect things that have nothing to do with each other. Like right also, now, thing. I think that's in everybody else's mind. Nowhere did I mention this. So I feel like people no, are taking what no, I what I said you chose and connecting this it. Moment, I'm not saying you. Like you I said, it's not your intention to come off of that way to make that statement. So when you right. choose You're, this moment to make that statement, it means like it seems like that statement is relevant to that right. moment. And I immediately and separated the two. My personal opinion is one has nothing to do with the other. And at the end of the day, and I want to put a pin in this right now because we're getting off topic. 
Yeah. You do not need to be talking about Anthony's video or his opinion. Well, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to make my last piece on it. No, gonna, I'm, I'm not asking you to make a last piece on it. We are done no, I'm, I'm talking about mine, Anthony's ours, video mine, and his ours. opinion. We are not here for if that. You keep, you can, if you want to keep talking to him about it, do it after the podcast. Mm. We are here to talk about George Floyd and what happened. Right. But here's the main problem. Like we got too many publications out there now, right? Trying to find a way to justify his murder. We're not talking. Like, oh, well. There's no justification. There's, yeah, there's no way who's justifying it. I don't know. No one, I didn't I have, no one I, have you heard yet anyone would justify that shit. They're, of, they're trying, but there's no way they can. And it's it's sad but true. First of all, the officer shouldn't have even been an officer anymore to begin with. He's had too many problems to begin with. If you go back and look, I, now the number, I can't find a confirmed number in more than one spot, but it's anywhere from 10 to 17 previous um I read, I think it was like 17 previous cases he had. Of of over, um, what's the, I can never think of the right word. But basically going too hard and, and over Excessive abusing his force. power. Excessive, Excessive force. force, thank you. He has actually killed another person in the line of duty. And I believe it was an Alaskan native is what Kitty said last night. I did not get a chance to confirm, so it might be wrong. Like I said, but he killed another person in the line of duty with obsessive force. So already, regardless of what happened, that man should not have been a police officer anymore after all of that. Because I don't care if you could have one or two cases or whatever and every judge puts them off. But if you have 17 people coming out the woodwork saying that this dude is using obsessive force, it's not a bunch of lies. It's a pattern. And it's going to happen again. So before any at all happened, the man should have never been a cop to begin with anymore. He should have been off the force long ago. There is no justification. And the simple fact that he has that much of a history of violent acts and excessive force also gives me the fact that there is an intent behind his actions that he had today. Regardless if race was behind the reasoning, there was an intent in his justification. Like, he did that shit on purpose. He has too much of a history not to have done that shit on purpose. Yeah, my you wife can't. also mentioned the same thing. She said, like, he does have multiple complaints. So it's and like, I, I can't. I, the number might be wrong. I might be off on the numbers, but I've seen from 10 to 17 that have been confirmed. And also, mm-hmm. another one of the officers that was on, the, that was there when it was happening, and it was one of the officers that was holding him down, also had an obsessive uh, uh, force thing that he had to, they had to pay because they settled out of court for $250,000. Damn. Yeah. So, I mean, like, this group of officers has history already. So that right there should have been a red flag from the instant. Like, that they don't handle the shit right to begin with. And that's well, what happens. People I are out here. I'm sorry, go again. It, but this stuff happened in the past. And now we're in the age of technology where everybody has a camera on them. So there wasn't the video proof that we have now whenever they were doing what they did before. So that's probably why most of it went on, you know, without any kind of consequences. But now that we're literally, everybody has a camera in their pocket. There's cameras on the corner. There's cameras in every store you pass. You know, so we're finding and we're finally having that proof that we need to be able to um, just bring it to justice. I can't talk because my mouth hurts. Like, bleh, I can't spit out, but you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Listen, don't judge me. Well, no, that's I, I feel like that's part of the systemic part of racism and that's also a problem with the police because this whole brotherhood mindset of protecting my own well they need to take a really hard look within their own and the bullshit needs to stop they need to hold themselves accountable because we've all heard one bad apple spoils the bunch well if you're not holding your fellow officers accountable you're just as bad you're you're complacent Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, nothing. They, Think they, about the dude who was standing there, right? Who wasn't on him with his hands He's in his pocket. In trouble too. He could have you know? easily been like, "Yo, my man, all right, you got him. We got right. him. Let's get right. off." Exactly. Right. Every single officer that stood there, whether they were part holding him down or just witnessing it, is just as bad as the officer who had his who was on the man's neck. And I guarantee a bunch of them is like, "Man, I should have said something. I should have did something. I knew I he was going too far." I highly doubt it. Yeah. Let me let me ask you that right now. They might They're say that to the public, but right in the moment of time, they weren't about, thinking that. Well, look, I ain't do it. Don't charge me. Like, trust me, none of them yeah. are worried about 
I should have did something. Trust me, because if that was the case, they would have did something. They yeah. very much outnumbered that man and could have easily pulled the officer off of him if that was the case. Yeah, there were, there were four officers involved. Five, I think, you include the one standing on him, but the other three it was, that was yeah, it was on four, him. three that was on him. Yeah, they like uh like the other the other that weren't on his neck should get manslaughter, but like the one on his neck should get murder one. Yeah, do you now? Do you think he's gonna get uh convicted? God, I hope Probably so. Not. So I hope, I hope so, so, but I'll be honest. Record. For the sake of Minneapolis, I hope so. I, I think yeah. because of the track record and all of these new videos, he's going to get it, and I honestly think that they're going to upgrade the charges eventually. Too. Because I'll say the be sake of Minneapolis he's, now. He's, because he's got everywhere. He's need, got third degree murder and second degree manslaughter right now. We need to look at this through the eyes of history. If they don't handle this correctly. This will be the second Rodney King. It already started, dude. Min exactly. Exactly. And if they don't handle this correctly, Minneapolis will burn. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think just Minneapolis. Well, no, yeah, because like, we're protesting other states. It's like, gonna, this, it's this, gonna this, gonna this is This is going to be a fucking because problem. There's riots not just in Minneapolis. Almost so every saying, single major all city. Over right now. Every and single major city is having riots. And if I, I can make a point on the riots, it, because man. the news media is no friend of ours in this. Because no. the news media, because the riots make news, they don't cover the peaceful protests. They also don't cover the fact that a lot of these protests, a lot of some of these, some of our fellow women and gentlemen will go out, have a peaceful protest, do their thing, and as they're leaving, undercover cops and white supremacists show up on the scene and incite violence. Yep. There's videos of groups of white people looting and causing vandalism in the stores. Yep. yep. So they fan out of flames. Exactly. They're also not talking or showing about how a lot of these protests will start off peaceful and then the cops will start the sh will start it. They'll start beanbagging and tear gas and then rubber bulletin and then it escalates from there because they literally will walk into the middle of a peaceful protest and blow a woman in the face with a rubber bullet who now has to have like a whole bunch of reconstructive surgery because her picture's out there. If you really want to Google it, do it, but I'm giving you a trigger warning. Don't do it if you're queasy. Got shot in the dead point blank range with a rubber bullet. Oh my god. So I, I, I will say this though, um, so just me speaking from me personally, my own opinions, um, I can't excuse the, the loot in the stores and all that. So I feel like that's that's just, yeah, that's just not justifiable. The people that are looting the stores, right, they're not doing it in the name of George Floyd. They're no, they're doing it in the name of that new TV is what they're doing it in the name they're of. They're doing it. Yeah. They're looting right now. They don't give a fuck about what happened to George Floyd. That's not, true. that's not true. Right. That's not true at all. And I'll tell you why I believe that's not I, true. I don't care about what George Floyd. Let me, I'm not going to bring somebody's house and steal their furniture either. That's yeah, that don't okay, make no sense. But I understand this. I, I'm having an extremely hard time with this. Because it, my soul hurts. Because I watched the video. And as far as I'm concerned, that man died on camera. He was dead he did. long before, long before they pulled him off the ground. That could have been any of y'all. That could have been me. And I'm mad. Yeah, this shit is hard I'm as hell to talk so really fucking mad. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. And I want to break shit. All I want to do is break shit. And I don't know what to yeah, do with myself. Life, I, I, don't either, but I, I don't know how to feel. But I do understand people who are looting and rioting because they're mad. They're hurt. They're heartbroken. This shit is fucked up. So I, can, I, I, I feel that. I understand that. It hurts. I'm hurting. 
So I'm just saying I can see why. Yeah. And I say like this, if any person who was looting and rioting, if they house or cars was burned down, if they would be like, you know what, it's all good. It was just in the name of the looting and rioting. Like, nobody, Look, no, nobody's going to I'm not saying that. it's like, okay, but I understand yeah. why. I mean, I get it, but it just, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not good. It's not justifiable. Like, nothing about it is positive. It just I to me. I agree with you on that about the looting, the rioting of. I we're having a hard time hearing you, Franco. Um, no, you literally sound like you're so far from your mic. It's not even like you have something covering your mic. Yeah. I'm covering my mic, actually. Hold on. There you go. He put his neck piece on. That's it. Hey, don't be hating on the neck piece. I'm about to get oh, didn't he one. wait? Did he finally get one? I got it for him. Yeah. Finally. I'm about to. I'm about to get me one soon. Yeah, because um um five below had just opened back up by me where you guys hey. saw. We was driving by, hey. seeing it was there open. There he is. All right, we hear you, Franco. There he is. He's back. And he and he's frozen. And now he's frozen. I thought we heard him. Uh, I Oh, but, but here's the camera today. Here's something I want to say, right? The change needs to start with us as a people. We need more of us behind those benches. We need more of us in those courtrooms. We need more of us in all them offices in order to make some type of change that benefits us. So shit like this could come to an end once and for all. Can you hear me now? I'm back. Yeah, yeah we hear there, you. We hear you now, Franco. Yeah, I... I yeah, I accidentally clipped myself because what I I, I, I was telling y'all to stop about the neck piece. Um, in this conversation, let's not segue off into dumb shit. Let's not, no. I All right, we can segue into anything else we want to segue into, but let's not start talking about fucking neck pieces and five belows and shit like that. So what I wanted to say was as far as the rioting and looting go, I don't know if it's because as I'm getting older, I start to to identify with things that were said before my time that I think have more of an impact in my time. And that goes back to, you know, Malcolm X saying, by any means necessary, right? And I made that post and I stand by it that at this point, George Floyd may just be the tipping point because we were already there and we were already on the edge. Do I think the looters that are looting targets and shit like that are just fine? Hell no. Do I think them burning down these mom and pop stores were just fine? Hell no. But I, I damn near got, oh no, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to stand by it. I 100% stand by the people who burnt down the fucking police stations. I stand by the people who went and put pressure on CNN headquarters. You know, I stand by the people who went out and they did these things when they whooped the shit out of the cops after the cops fired the bullets and pepper spray into the crowd of protesters who were standing on the sidewalk peacefully protesting. So those people, that's what I stand by. But going to rob a fucking Target or Walmart is fucking stupid. Yeah. It has absolutely nothing to do with supporting the fight for this man's life. I just Nothing. said that a few minutes ago. Once you go out and start stealing shit and breaking property, Nothing. you 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 you, you and, in that instant you stop giving a fuck about George Floyd. And it's 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 a it's a very complicated situation now because on one hand this needs to happen, but on the other hand. 
this is also going to give them the ammunition to turn back against us. So we're in that conundrum now where it's stand up for what's right, but we're the bad guys. And you're going to have that group of people that come out of our race, and not just our race, but that comes out of all races who are going to turn in and eat ourselves because we're going to start pointing out reasons why we're at fault. We're going to start pointing out reasons why maybe they had a reason to kill that man. We're going to point out reasons why maybe it was okay for those two fucking dudes to hunt down Ahmaud Aubrey and shoot him because he looked in the fucking house under construction. But we didn't run down on and shoot them other people that looked in that same house that were caught on the same camera the entire time the house was being under fucking construction. But we still going to sit here and try to make a fucking excuse for why. Why this shit happens to us. Why this shit is going to look bad on us when we fight for our rights. When we fight to get justice for this man's life. When we fight to get justice for any man's life. And at the end of the day, it don't need to be just black people fighting for this shit. Because when it's all said and done, and let's say the racists win and they fuck the black people over completely and we're gone, who are you going to turn on and eat next? You're going to turn on the poor white people. Yep. Because all the, all the niggas is gone. All the spicks is gone. All the gooks are gone. Oh, shit. Well, you know what? Bob, Tom's family doesn't have as much money as we have. Who can we oppress now? They're the shits. Let's get rid of them. So, do I agree with the looting and rioting? Uh, well, the looting, I'm not even going to say rioting because I agree with the rioting. I, I'm going to keep it 100. Um, but do I agree with the looting of fucking businesses that are nowhere connected to this situation? The establishment is the issue. Law enforcement is the issue. It ain't white people that we should be fighting against right now. It's law enforcement. And as Justin says, it's the systemic racism built into it. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, there's been more than a couple black cops around when one of ours were killed through police brutality. And they're in that brotherhood, and they stood up for that other fucking cop. Yep. They don't hold each other accountable. And And... That that's that's where the accountability needs to be at. That's where it needs to be at. I have a question. I, literally switched the phone. I have a question. Do you think these officers are trained to be more hostile towards African Americans? I don't think they're trained at all. That's the problem. No. The police training is like six weeks. Yeah, they're the problem with police problem with law enforcement right, right now, right? They're it's improperly training. trained. They have mo they have they they probably suffer emotional and mental issues that spills over into their judgment when performing their duties as an officer. Of the well, law. I have an opinion on that, if I may speak on that. I have, mm -hmm. and this is something that I've actually formulated over a number of years, and just from dealing with certain people. Now, and Kim, please don't take offense to this. We all know I love white people, very much. Almost too You're much the some of the time. But in my experience, what I truly believe is that on some level, all white people are racist. And like and, you said before, they don't know they're let racist. Me, let me finish, Gene. <laughs> and I don't necessarily mean on purpose because this comes from hundreds of years of programming. Hundreds of years of systemic racism and programming and how there are elitist attitudes that exist and that have built up literally genetic coding on how we react to each other. Perfect example of this. I was, you all know my son Alex. I was dating Stephanie at the time. Everything was cool. 
until she got pregnant. Now, mind you, before that, met Terry, love her to death. I consider her a mom. But when Stephanie got pregnant, Alex, before he was even born, my son was all type of nigglets, and I was a nigga, and this and that and the third. It was so bad that Stephanie left her house and moved into mine. And then when he was born, it became, oh, that's my grandson, and I love him. But see, Justin, you better than me in that situation because, and I know this sound cold-blooded, but if ever I had a child with a white woman and somebody in her family twisted their mouth up to call my child a nigglet, nigger, whatever, my child would have been a nigglet nigger to them forever. And they would have had no contact with my child. Look, 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 and I would have made sure my child knew that look, that's how they felt by them. Look, look, they were just nearly. I just took some pictures. Look at them. That's the police? That's Trey. That's what I'm talking about. What happened? So What's going on? What I just heard, so what? What the fuck is that? <laughs> what happened? What, what happened? What happened, Franco? No, the, um, the video right oh, oh, no, I was just... Yeah. I was just showing the picture that the Trenton police, remember, I don't know if y'all saw when we, we went through the protests. Right. Um, apparently, the protesters got to where the Trenton police were. The Trenton police came out in force and kneeled. Holy oh, yeah, shit. I, I that. Oh, I that's beautiful. That's, that's yeah, what, it, Jersey, that's what the fucking needs to happen. Oh, my protest. fucking God. Same thing happened in Newark. They did not confront the people, and the one cop that wasn't kneeling was over by a barricade with the protesters talking to them that's what needs to fucking not brandishing happen an assault rifle, not brandishing tear gas grenades having a conversation now this is the type of shit that won't make the news you're right this is the exact type yeah, of shit that you. won't that's make the news so if there is a picture of it then post it and share that yeah, yeah. shit oh everywhere i think oh, you may have took pictures if you took pictures i'll be posting them yeah, because hopefully this, hopefully every, all the protesters get like this, man. Yeah. And you know what, just, just to kind of throw something on the back of that, the weird part is like, I don't want to want people to just take from this that we really saying like, fuck the police and the police is for all fucked up because it's not all of them. It's but on not. the same token of that, it's got to come down to we need to open like this clear line of communication to let these cops know that it's okay for them to stand up for us because we're going to support them when they do. Yeah, fact. Sure. And there are like the whole cops are police, there. all cops are pigs. That's one thing. You can track my post. I will never say all cops are pigs. I will never say fuck all the police. I will never say that because it ain't all of them. Right. And in order for us to get the ones that will stand for us and protect us to come out in front and do it, we got to make sure they know when they do, we linking arms with them and we rocking out with them because now we know That's a small we piece have of somebody victory. representing us. Yeah. It's a small piece of victory right there. Yeah, it really. really is. But uh, that brings yeah, that me shit hope. Just, that shit that just hit me right in the heart when right I see that picture. Um... I don't know how 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 much more we want to say about that part of this, but one thing I if if I can start another part of it, um, still tied into this, the abhorrent reaction to this from the president. Oh my God! Don't get me started on that motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say this and walk away from it. Let y'all take take this over. She, and she this ain't me being anti-Trump because he's the president. My thing is, in the midst of all this going on, this man losing his life and multiple riots breaking out all across America, he had the audacity to sit his ass in the White House and start to try to draft legislation to make social media stop doing shit he don't like. Oh, yeah, because... because Twitter, because now Twitter him. is starting to because call him on, on his on, bullshit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because Twitter has this shit where they fact check tweets. Yep. 
and and they clipped his ass twice, and now he pissed. So instead of him coming out and being the leader of America in this situation and getting out there and saying, hey, listen, we need to unify, we need to get to the bottom of this, he said, I'm going to sit my ass here and write this fucking legislation because Twitter fact-checked it. We do not have a leader in the White House no. that is thinking about what is going on with his people. No, nope, not at all. He's concerned with his image and re-election. What do y'all, what do y'all think, think of his response? I think that exactly what you think. We don't have a fucking leader. We have a little bitch boy that is more worried about how people view him than what the fuck is going on in this country right now. Heaven Talk forbid you get fact-checked on something that you said, because guess what? You needed to, because what you said was wrong. You are human. We make mistakes, presidents and all. But no, that, that that's what matters right now instead of the fact that people are dying just because of the color of their skin. I'll say this. That shit was absurd. It's about goddamn time, because Donald J. Trump on multiple occasions has violated... Twitter's terms of service. When he threatened Iran openly, on he threatened violence against another, against another country openly on Twitter. Anyone else would have gotten their account straight banned immediately, with no questions asked. You don't, you don't, you don't provocate violence on open social media. You just don't do that. And he did sure. just that. He's done it on multiple occasions, and Twitter has not touched him. It's about damn time. At the very least, they fact checked him. He wants to say shit like, oh, they're suppressing conservative opinions. Um, let's see, your tweets are still up, motherfucker. They didn't take them down. They just said, um, you might want to research this. Yeah, he said it. You might want to check it out. But in no way, shape, or form have they suppressed his voice. Even his one tweet they said they should have taken down, they haven't taken down. Because when he finally did respond to all this, like, he had the opposite thing he said about those Nazis about a couple years ago. What was it, Charlottesville, where he called them very nice people? He's like, oh, they're just a bunch of thugs. And the military, oh, sorry, the National Guard will yep. be happy to help. Yeah. Twitter was like, um, that's glorifying violence. We're not allowed to show this. This tweet should be taken down, but we're not going to just because we feel like it shouldn't. I say it's important enough that people might have to see. Yeah, because he put out a tweet basically saying when the looting starts, starts the shooting starts, which is actually a phrase that came from the '60s. I and he just literally brought it back, provocating yeah. violence on social media. And they put they flagged it, and yet they still did not take it down. But at the very least, they flagged it. So did y'all see? Also see that he, when everything was first starting up. He made like a very, like you can tell, like somebody said, "Here, Mr. President, go say this." He was like, "Yeah, this is a tragic situation." Oh yeah. Uh, we're gonna support the people, and then literally thirty days later, he said, "When the looting start starts, the shooting the starts." Shooting starts. Because so he opened he his mouth and spoke his own true feelings instead of whatever somebody wrote down on a fucking piece of paper for him. Yep. He literally flip flopped his uh his position on people. Um. <laughs> I just think this is one of those situations where, and again, not that I'm not down at him as a president, but, and I know y'all hate when I get too political, but I want to take, liken it, harken it back to Obama's administration. When everybody dug in his shit, when he spoke up, when Trayvon Martin was killed, yep, and they gave Obama shit, because they said, hey, you only speaking up because he's black. You only speaking up because he's black. You the president. You shouldn't be worried about this. And he came back and he countered. He said, this is a clear sign that something is wrong with our law enforcement institution. To let this shit go down the way it did. And he got shit. Now, you flash forward to the current president. He won't even fucking address it. Nope. Hasn't said this was their one. opportunity to prove that hey, Obama only did it because he was black. I'm doing it because I'm the president. You literally had a caveat out there to pull your bullshit. What is Instead, you showed your true colors and you didn't say anything of substance. You're not giving daily updates. 
you're not reaching out to the state and putting pressure on them. And when you are, it's like the most odd shit he's saying. Like, I know federal government doesn't interfere with state government, but in situations like this, the president will call the governor and they will fucking brainstorm. Right. He will, will ask for updates. Support. He will ask for updates. He will make, you know, the federal branch of, like, the military or the federal branch of the police available to you. But you ain't even doing that, bro. You're not oh, boy, ain't like, doing it. And almost like he's quietly trying to condone it. And the sad part is, this is what kills me, because this is why I'm sorry. This is why I feel like it's raw stupidity, because he's being presented with, and the crazy part is he's being presented with a few. These are legit 9-11 moments. Yes. Coronavirus, 9-11 moments. George Floyd, 9-11 moments. When 9-11 happened, George W. stepped up. And I don't care how many stupid things he did in the past, people remember him for how he handled 9-11. And let me, hold on, let me interject. That's good you brought that up. So with his 9-11 response, right, he, and and, and this is going to be some crazy shit, because when he first, his first reaction, I was pissed off at him. Because when he got the news, he was reading the books to the kids, right? Uh-huh. And he didn't fucking react. He didn't respond. He sat there. He finished reading. I was like, man, fuck this dude. This fucking dude is a piece of shit. Fuck him. And then, without putting out anything yet, he went and started, you know, being the president, his reactions, his response. And I'm like, you know what? Somebody said something to him about that shit with the book, and then he's trying to save face. But if you look it up, Shit came out after that happened. He literally said, one, I'm the president of the United States. These kids understand that. And I needed to present a brave face for them to be prepared for what was going to come. So even though he sat there and he finished reading that book, he was shook. And as soon as he left that classroom, he was like, what the fuck is going on? Give me updates, give me updates, give me updates. Right. Did he mishandle the information and shit? Did our government mishandle the information and shit they got previous, prior to that? Yes. Somewhat? Yes. Did they not react better in the beginning? Could they not have reacted better in the beginning? Yes. But did he hide in the fucking Oval Office nope. and not say shit? No. Nope. And No. And I wasn't a George W. supporter. Right. Me neither. Wasn't fair, but I respected the fact that he weathered that storm. And he stood up and he was out there for the American people. And so, what is our president doing right now? Well, that's what I'm right, saying. Right, so I yeah. say I have to say this. These are Donald Trump's 9-11 moments, and he's literally throwing them away. He's so concerned with his own personal stuff, his own reelection. His own personal outlook to to the admit to to his base will say, and the rest of the world, and he refuses to see the positive that could come out of him handling this correctly. Because obviously, I'm not voting for him. Obviously, I didn't vote for him from jump. But if he was truly concerned with his reelection, he might want to handle these issues a little better because it's these issues. That would have gotten him reelected if he handled them better. I'll be honest with you, Justin. I didn't vote for him, and I probably wouldn't vote for him now. But let's just say, in the alternate reality, he did the opposite of everything he's doing right now. Come election season, I might be like, damn. Facts. Um, Facts. Exactly. Like, oh my God, when that Corona shit hit, Donald Trump handled that shit, damn. I might want to rethink my opinion of him. Oh my God! With all these police murders, he he started putting legislation in place to really hold law enforcement accountable. No, he's not doing that. He's not doing that. No, at all. He's sitting in the office, banging them Twitter fingers, man, worrying about like you said about what people saying about him. And it's he blew two huge nine eleven moments. Yep. Two. 
Trump is so cocky and so arrogant. He believes he don't have to do nothing and still get reelected in November. Well, that, well, he's gonna get a sad wake up call because even with his quote unquote supporters, his numbers have dropped dramatically. Yeah, I actually Not thought he was probably gonna, gonna win. Just dropped it I thought he was gonna win uh, before the before the pandemic happened because he just get away with murder, right? So I'm like, yo, watch this guy win. But after the whole I pandemic, the, the way thing. he handled it, I'm not sure, no. Yeah, I said the same thing as you, and I agree with you. I was like, he gonna fuck around and win again because mm -hmm. there's no viable candidate. Right. And, you know, there's nothing going on, but now his metal is being tested. Yep. Yeah. And he's he failing. dropping the ball. You're right. With the pandemic, he dropped the ball. Because not only is he, was his reaction piss poor, other people had to put the reactions like, but then his misinformation, the bullshit he's doing when he was saying he was taking that drug. Oh yeah, I'm taking this medicine. Uh, untested, right, unproven. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you guys. Let me ask you guys a question. Does everybody still in Jersey? No. No, we are killing. I you. am not in Jersey. I'm Jersey. in Texas. Okay. So, because uh, uh, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm like, are you like? Uh, I live in a Republican state. So do I. And. Uh, Perception here is that it, it's not the same as your perception. I just need because I I admit that he's dialed in to both sides. Mm -hmm. But his base, like he 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 he's responding exactly how his base wants him to. Well see, <laughs> like, I I I'm in Texas, which I don't think you can get any fucking more Republican than goddamn Texas. <laughs> you know, it's nothing but guns and fucking steers here, basically. But mm -hmm. This has been very much a very big pro-Trump area from the gate. There's nothing you can say or do that would have changed anybody's mind. But even here, though the change is not as drastic as it is in other places, you can still see that the, the opinions are really starting to change. The people are looking, because you've got these people, and it's not the rich, you know, white people by any means. It's the middle class to low class to poor because they're like, look, we can't afford to do anything after this pandemic because guess what? My job is not uh, essential. So I haven't been able to go to work. You know, I haven't been able to do anything that I need to do. So I can't pay my bills and put food on my table. And they're not doing what needs to do to help me. And now with this, there's a lot of people that are realizing, yo, he doesn't know how to react to anything, basically. Like, I'm on a podcast right now. Yeah, according to, like, uh, yeah, when, I, when I'm getting, the sense I'm getting out here is there should have never been a lockdown. Like, we, we, uh, like, uh, that we, we all should still be working. This whole pandemic thing is, is a hoax. <laughs> it's, uh, it was that Just, way at first. Justin's and been, Justin's been saying that. That's what Justin was saying a couple weeks ago, is that in, like, middle America, it's like uh, a lot of people don't believe in it. You know, a lot of people are still doing whatever, and eventually it's going to close into there. So, Matt, how is the pandemic where you're at? Like, um, you know, how is it things going down there? Uh, a month ago wasn't that bad. It was a, it was a few cases, but it's been growing. It's been it's been. That's what uh, Justin said. Yeah. Justin, you did say and that. So it's uh, my my wife said we had like 400 cases, more cases last week. We had like no one's been testing here. Oh you know, it, like it, what, what I see in the news is like, you're not saying no one is it, it, the tests are the number so small, right? But, they're few and far between, uh, they're hard to get, yeah, pretty much. But like, no one, like, uh, but I, I'm not surprised on moms or like or anything because the hit the feelings here is that it shouldn't, you know, some people, the people who are have some sense, Republicans that have some sense, they you know, they're saying in and then there's people like oh this is not serious i'm just gonna go out like we shouldn't be on lockdown and they feel for the people who are losing their jobs or you know and so in the end he can still flip that like he's not going to win the, the, the democratic states but he's still going to win the republican states because they probably agree that like they think it's a hoax and like he and like his responses he's being wishy-washy that there he can go to later on convince them that Oh, this was a hoax. I was with you. I was with you from the beginning. I never was with. That's why I didn't have a set, you know, response to say, "Hey, uh, stay in, stay indoors," or you know. Let me actually let let me ask you guys this to tie it in. So, because the whole George Floyd thing, and we got riots going on all over. So you gotta 
think um, it's gonna make the it's COVID gonna numbers are going to balloon, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, they are. You know? And it's because- crazy because when one end, the whole world is, like, terrified because of COVID. Not the whole world, but mostly, right? And then George Floyd happened, and it's almost like you don't see no masks. And people are just like, it's like crazy. We was terrified to walk out the door because we're going to die from this disease. I've been, and then now everybody's like, I don't even care. This matters more to you I've see been, crowds of people brushing up next to each other. Like the COVID isn't even real. It's like, wow. I've so been I wonder saying, how those people This masks. shit is damn That's near crazy. biblical. We have COVID. They bring up fucking murder hornets. Now we have people riding in the streets. Like, what the fuck is next? The murder hornets was a filler ex- episode. Yeah. It was a filler episode? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was you know what the funny part is like not to sidetrack it but the whole murder hornet thing I honestly believe they made that news to try to distract yeah, us it was a distraction from shit that they weren't doing in the pandemic because the murder hornets ain't that serious no they're not they literally just they're kill not. bees yeah unless you personally get swarmed by them you're alright Saying that if all the bees, they saying if enough bees get died, then that would be yeah. It'll affect our, it'll affect our ecosystem definitely. They've been going off on bees for years, though. You remember? Oh, the bees are all gonna die. The bees are all gonna die. Like that's something they've been going off for. Well, the bee levels have been dropping steadily. That they might be able to do something about it. Like it's yeah. So it's very much not that big of an. <laughs> yeah, is it is is it an issue? Yes. Is it big enough that it needs to take a pre- away from what's going on right now? Twenty minutes no. spot on the eleven o'clock news. Fuck no. Yeah, but it, it's crazy when you think of the riot and the COVID though, because they go hand in hand, and it's like, okay, so all the people out there are there. Some of the people that was once saying that, oh, we gotta take this super serious. Out. You shouldn't be going outside. Like they shouldn't reopen things. And then you got this. It's like, wait, what? See, that's another thing, and I think as the numbers are getting bigger or smaller, wherever you may live depends. Like, here, my county just passed 10,000 cases of COVID, and the numbers, they went down, they they spiked up when the state first reopened, and they went down a little bit, but now they're starting to rise back up again. You know, and when I say they went down a little bit, we went from having 300 cases a day down to 200, and now the 200 numbers are growing back up again because people are going back out and exposing themselves the, around like that. The next two weeks are going to be very telling. Yes. Yeah. The next two weeks are going to really, really show a lot as far as COVID. So, so what is shows. everybody's prediction for, like, uh, the aftermath of this What's, whole story thing? Do we think, like... Uh, it all, but it all depends on how everything's handled. Honestly, I still think it's too early to call. I want to know what y'all think about the anonymous stuff that happened. Today. I don't even know what happened. And not what okay, anonymous so, stuff happened, Julian. So anonymous the video in the chat. Back, uh, what happened? I was about to say, so anonymous came back. He basically called out the police. Of uh, course. Hacked the website, and I think like even like a like right as we started, they like leaked the entire what is it, Minneapolis Police Department. Like, leak their entire, like, officers, like, accounts and stuff like that. And also, and also apparently here. linked Donald Trump to uh, a sex trafficking link with uh, Oh, y'all just hold it. Hold it. Hold so, it. Like, they, like, Anonymous has just come out and just started just basically. I'll try to find the video where uh, in a second. Look in the chat. Like, I posted it in the, the chat. chat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, Anonymous has just come out, basically kind of declared some type of, like, war on the Minneapolis Police Department, and they just, like, kind of started exposing... I don't know if you heard me. If you look in the chat, the video's in there. Oh, well, I'm not in there, so I can't see. Well, post it here, Frank. Post it in yeah. the, um, the Discord. I, it. I, was, I watched it already. Yeah, he posted it in the chat a little while ago. I'm going to have to watch that. Yeah, yeah. So now, what explain honestly, to me and the people what's anonymous? Like, is this real? Because I looked at a, it and I was like, "I mean, you never I, heard of anonymous." Honestly, before no. today, I kind of thought it was just like almost like an urban legend. But I believe it's a group of people called anonymous, a group of hackers yeah, that come out and they just they hack shit like this. Like, yeah, they when down the the website, they they uh, release this type of information to the public when they feel like, okay, no, you guys need to be exposed for the things you have done. 
Yeah, they Thanks. tend to like white knight hackers. They tend to show up when big shit like this happens and they expose like either larger corporations or in this case the Minneapolis Police Department. But uh I was surprised when I heard about it. They've been around for a while. No, yeah, Anonymous hackers. has been around for a long time, but they really only rear their head with like really major stuff. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I literally hadn't heard about them in, like I heard only heard about heard about uh, rumors of them. Like like I said, I didn't think they existed or anything until today. No, I've seen a video real. and I didn't know. I thought it was like a joke or something. Yeah. I didn't take no, it they're real. real. No, they're real. And like people make the mistake that Anonymous is a person. It's not a person. It's like it's a, a hacking. Yeah. It's, it's a, a network like a group hacking. of people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably too big to even be a group. They're probably a network. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could yeah. get on one person. Yes. Yeah. But the simple fact that they alone have reacted to this issue with his death lets you know how big the scope is of it. It's literally like Franco has said, the tip of the I like it was a tipping point. Yeah. It's yeah. the last straw for a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Like. Well, I mean, yeah, you've been you sitting on a computer case really all year. All the shit that Minneapolis Police Department has done is really fucked up. Oh, yeah. I just recently learned that they this is the same police department that dealt with, what is it, Philando Castile, which is, honestly, yeah. for me, one of the most heartbreaking cases. So that, yeah. I'm going to be honest, yeah. that one broke me in a way, because I used to spend a lot of time looking at these videos going, okay, what did they do? So if I ever get stopped, I can avoid it. And, like, it broke me because he did nothing wrong. Like, literally nothing wrong. Like, he was... That one still hurts me the most to this day, because... I still get nervous seeing a cop car ride by me, even though I'm not... I've never done anything wrong in my life, nor will I probably ever do anything wrong in my life. But every time I see a cop car, I always go, okay, where's my wallet? Uh, what do I say if they stop me? What do I do? And that video made me realize that there's a chance that no matter what I do, it's not going to fucking matter, and... Yeah, I was not uh, okay for a long time. I'm convinced that if you, if the, if the cop has it in their heart that they're upset or they're, you know, they have certain prejudices, it's gonna happen. Like we all, I don't know, we all got pulled over many times. I don't know if you ever been in a car with Josh. How many times you got pulled over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get like if it's in the if it's in that officer's heart to do it, they just gonna do it. Like, uh, like reason. And I think the good point you said is if it's in their heart. That's why I don't like to throw it on everybody. Like Andrew actually said in the chat, he said, it's sad that you'll get a white guy to kill, or I forgot how he worded it, but he was saying that now everybody would look at everybody the same way. And I think he said you get a one white guy to kill a black guy, and then everybody look at all the, the white people. And I feel like it's hard because people want to say, like Justin did, his belief is that all white people have a form of racism in them. Um, I don't. I can't go to that extreme and say that. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know because I don't know everybody and haven't spent time with every white person in the world to think that. But well, like I said, it, like I said, it's not purposeful. It's due to right, program, said, it's due to, that, it's due to that's, programming, that's and that's racism. not that's, anyone's that's fault. Prejudice. Every, everybody has their own prejudices. Like, uh, you know, it's just right. a thing. Like, society. I respectfully disagree with that, but that's besides the point. Well, yeah, everybody. Well, everything like, uh, like there's just certain prejudices that are just bred into you, depending on, um, like, it, 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 it's it's just that's just a thing. Like, it, you might see, uh, well, it's just there's too many things to go into. Like, I I read an article in it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like what right now? Yeah, the you. Like if you like you said you watched that video of. Uh, Castillo, that bred a prejudice against police officers. You just admitted that. Yeah. I was just saying, I disagree with the genetically part. I feel like it's definitely taught. It's definitely taught. It's you definitely know. taught. I wouldn't say it's genetic, though. Okay. I, didn't this, I, didn't I have a prime genetic, example of it being. I know, I was just, that, that was Justin's point. A taught oh. thing, okay? Everybody, I don't, most people in here know that my family that I live with in Texas was extremely racist. And when I say extremely racist, this is a prime example for those who do not know. When I was in high school, I went to prom with a black guy. They found out. They literally packed my shit up and dropped me off at the youth hostel. Wow. Just because I went to prom with a black guy. I didn't, we weren't even dating, like, literally. Just friends. Just went to prom. 
we were two nerds and we liked the same thing and I was a little fat girl and nobody wanted to go with me so we went as friends so that's the type of racism that I've, I've come from and I know you guys can tell from talking to me annoying me you know I'm I'm not racist at all I don't you know I have no ill intent towards anybody based on that and I think anybody that has any ill intent on anybody based on something that they cannot control i.e. how they're born who they love as long as they're not hurting anybody else or anybody you have no reason to even you know make a judgment call about that it's their fucking life let them do what they want they can't change the fact that they were born with darker skin than you they can't change the fact that they were born you know with certain things about them and a prime example of it being a taught thing happened with my niece natalie she's four years old she's sitting there looking at this picture and this picture is of like little kids playing and there's a whole bunch of you know there's a white kid a black kid hispanic kid and an asian kid in the picture playing and we was like her uh dad asked her if she could see anything different with these kids in the picture and she said yeah this one's playing with that toy this one's playing with the other toy this one's you know doing this the other one's just watching he goes is there anything else different he goes she goes well yeah this one's got brown hair and this one's got blonde hair but other than that they're basically the same not a single mention of the skin color differences that were with the kids she didn't even notice it it was like it wasn't even there yep but that's true. Well, hatred is taught. Was, hatred is not a, something we are born with. Hatred is taught. Where um, they had a bunch of kids that were raised. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was uh raised and uh they were never taught that they were black, white, or anything. And they were raised like that all together for like, I want to say for like the first couple years, if I'm not mistaken. And then when they were actually like. Kind of like Kim said, when they were told to like talk about each other, they couldn't grasp the concept that one was black, one was Asian, one was white. You know what I mean? They couldn't grasp that concept. It had to be told to them. So that tells you right there, you know, in society right now, like it's kind of weird. Like I understand where Justin was coming from when he said it's almost like it's genetic. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. You know what I mean? It's almost like it is. Um, and, you know, I'm notorious for saying that everybody might not be racist, but almost everybody has a prejudice and don't realize it. It just happens to be that as a nation and really as a world, but more so as a nation, that that prejudice plays out where K or law enforcement beat the shit out of a black person. Your mic quality got really bad. We're losing you, Franco. Your mic disappeared. I just moved the phone and it fucking blocked the mic. Y'all can hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and to give you an example of that, um, I don't know if y'all seen if I still have it. I posted this picture, and Eugene, being Eugene, stole my shit. <laughs> and I'm glad he did. What's up? And I'm glad he did steal it. Um. But it, it it literally shows you the um hold on. I, I wanna get this picture and give it to y'all, but it literally shows you four different situations of um police arresting people. Two were two white guys who were mass murderers. Yes. One was came out that picture. Frank, in my defense, I feel that picture needed more eyes. No, he and said, I said, I'm, said glad glad you, you I said I'm, I'm glad you took it. That's that's a post that I wanted somebody to take and share. Um, and the point I, w I was making when I, I posted that wasn't, you know, trying to call people out and, and, and say, like, but I just wanted to point out. And, you know, it was one guy killed nine people, one guy killed 23 people, one guy allegedly sold loose cigarettes, and the other guy allegedly forged a, a forged a check. Mind you, these two men were killed for allegedly doing something. They never even got found guilty or proven. Right. The other two guys were proven murderers and were treated so nice. Yeah, they were apprehended. While they got with that white kid that shot up that Baptist church or whatever. Yep, yeah. in South North Carolina, right? Yeah, I think they so. They literally, and they put a vest on him so nobody could shoot his ass. So yep. nobody else could get him. Let's see. 
if y'all look, I think I'm sharing it. Yep. There it is. Yeah, I just shared it into the Discord. Every one of that mass murder right there actually took him to get something to eat on the way to jail. Yep. Yeah, it took they him to McDonald's. Like, the fuck yep. is that? This is America, ladies so, and gentlemen. This is America. The craziest place on earth. You know, it's pretty, pretty fucking deep, man. Stuff like that really, like, fucks me up. Yeah. And so, again, like to kind of jump back to it, I know we were talking about with the George Floyd. So, as far as let's, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but let's uh, move forward to what do you think the treatment of this officer is going to be or should be? Because I personally feel like he should not be treated any different one way or the other than any other person going through the criminal system. Nope, and what he shouldn't, I mean but we... That, uh, what I mean by that is, if he's convicted... Jan Pop. Right? If he's convicted, he should not be put in any type of special protective custody. Hell no. He shouldn't be treated to, you know, no. he should be held to the same standards of me if I'm convicted of murder. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm going in general population. Yep. Right? Yep. I'm going in general population. I'm going to whatever shitty prison is out there. No special and I'm going treatment. To serve my time. Yep. So no, no special treatment. No shit. About no oh, like like for example, I think it just came out that he was put on suicide watch. Listen. When it comes to stuff like this in high profile cases where people get say that they're put on suicide watch, yeah, some of them might be because for legitimate suicide reasons, but most of the time it's just so they can keep fucking eyes on them and keep them from getting hurt by other inmates. It's not because they want to hurt themselves, it's because other people want to hurt them. And, and, I, and, I, and I feel that. I feel that to a certain extent. Um, but Suicide watch shouldn't be a cozy little room. No. Yeah, like you know I mean? he, he shouldn't get so, so he, he has been detained. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, has he, been arrested. Yeah, he's been, he's arrested. been charged. He, he got a charge of third degree murder and second degree manslaughter on him right now. Those other cops can be charges too, but that's. The, I do believe that they are they're looking working in. On it. They're working on it because they're trying to word it correctly and get. Again, like Franco says, what they can prove. They want it to stick. The shit yeah. has yep. to stick. Because yeah. if it doesn't stick, it's yeah. going to be a problem. It's going to get yeah. so much worse if it doesn't And stick. another thing is going to be when it comes time for trial. Because it's mm -hmm. going to be hard to find the, quote, unbiased, uh, you know, opinion I that is needed to find a proper jury for this. Because this is a very heated topic. I think because the what's going on in the world, this started something. Um, maybe because what uh, I think Frank or Justin said this needed to happen. So I think they all man. If he if he got off, it would be crazy. I think they probably gonna do a good job with the jury. I think I can't pitch if he get off. That's gonna be crazy. I don't think America can handle what's gonna. Dude, happen. America since coming into twenty twenty has been sitting on a powder keg. Basically, they're just waiting. Up, and you only so poorly. What we got going on right now will be much worse. My I faith think. in humanity is usually pretty bad when it comes to these things, and the only reason I have a little faith, not only is because I know what would happen if he got off, but because that chick Amber, whatever that, um, with the Dallas case that happened, and she was found guilty because she roamed into the wrong house and shot a man in his own living room claiming it was hers. Yeah. She was a police Be officer too, right? She was a police yeah, officer. Yeah. And because she was recent, it, it was the most recent thing that went to trial. She's the the first, uh, one of very few that I can remember that actually was found guilty of the charges. Because I'm pretty sure the other ones that have gone to trial were all either given way lesser sentences or found not guilty. No, she was found guilty, but her sentence was light as fuck. 
So it was like, a light was, sentence, yes, but I, I mean, they was, actually found her guilty. Was was, was I, I'm sorry, but um, in her situation, that sentence was way too light. Yes, but and it's fucked up to play the devil's advocate. It was really hard for her to be tried the way she was supposed to be tried because there was so much fucking bullshit disinformation put out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, my thing is, you came back... I, what, what, was it? Was she drunk or wasn't she drunk? Yeah, they, they were claiming she was, she was drunk. She was drinking. They were, they were drinking. claims I'm that they had... The wrong department. There was claims that she had some kind of relationship with the dude. Waiting. There were claims didn't. that, yeah, apparently she got off her elevator or whatever on the wrong floor. Wrong floor. And get to and walk into the wrong apartment. And because the door was quote unquote unlocked and she saw someone standing in the background, she thought he broke into the house, the apartment. Right. What Mind she, you, he wasn't standing in the background. He was sitting on his fucking couch watching TV. Yeah. So they basically gave her that bullshit sentence because she was drunk and wasn't aware of her actions. Well, no, 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 no. Not that she was drunk and wasn't aware of her actions. Story. I feel like it was an example of the media fucking shit up. Oh yeah. Because they 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 raised that that bar. So it was on one hand they was like, we know we have to convict her. But what can we actually? convict her of and actually prove again. What can we prove? What can we disprove? So forth and so on. Well, I have a theory on her whole situation. And to me, this just speaks on male and female equality. Because Mm -hmm. I feel like if that was a male officer, he wouldn't have got charged. I feel like they decided to take this opportunity to say, we hear you. The police aren't held accountable. So we're going to use her as the example to show you that, yes, we hold police accountable. I, I agree and disagree. Um, I agree that they definitely use her as an example to be like, yeah, we hear you. But I, I actually feel like if it was a male officer, they would have probably hit him a little harder. Yeah. Because he was a male. I think because she was a female, that's what I was talking about. Because she was a female and with the media, I feel like they said, How can we give her a lighter sentence? You know what I'm saying? And and I think race played into it because if you play paid attention, they tried to play the whole, oh, he looked like a big angry black guy in there. That smokes weed. And uh, she was she was she was scared because it was a, a a black guy in her apartment. My whole perception is I don't give a fuck how drunk I am. I don't give a fuck if I try my key and it don't work. That's the wrong apartment. Oh, the door is unlocked and I open the door and walk in. I don't recognize none of my shit. None of it. Right. Leave. I'm going to leave, because I'm going to oh. be honest with y'all. This is, a, this is a true fucking story. That's what you I did come home one night drunk as fuck. Drunk as shit when I lived in Ewan. And I literally opened the wrong fucking door. I took a step in that motherfucker, and I looked around drunk as shit. I'm talking about damn near blackout drunk I was, too. And I was like, this ain't my house. And I backed my ass up real quick. Like. And closed the door. Legit. (laughs) And then then found my place and passed out somewhere in the living room because I recognized our shit. Oh, my God. That's what. Oh my God, that's what kills me about that case. In particular the How the fuck do you not walk into someone else's house and realize it ain't yours? Like, what? What? Now, here's the scary part, though. Here's the scary part. I think that was a case where she should have got, like, first or second degree murder because that man apparently was saying, Hey, what are you doing in my apartment? What are you doing in my apartment? And then when he seen the gun, 
put his hands up. I think this bitch one killed him because she's like, oh, I'm a fucking cop. I'll get away with it. Basically. That's what I kind of fucking feel like. And it's crazy, too, because then Eugene will call me on this shit if I don't say this. Because me and Eugene had this whole big back and forth about it. I said, when it's all said and done, you can't get mad at his family if they forgave her. Because Eugene was mad mm. that, that um the mom, I think, was it the mom you that hugged her in court? The mom and the sister? Yes. Gave her a hug in court or some shit? Was that that case? Yeah. Yeah, and it, and, and the judge stepped down and, and felt guilty for the murderer and gave her a hug. And the judge too. Now, as far as the judge, I wasn't with that shit because that's not professional. No, that's um, that's biased. But, but as far as the family, that is their fucking prerogative. Right. Now, did they forget she killed their son and brother? No. Never. I think what they were fucking trying to say is, hey, listen. We got justice. You got found guilty. We hope whatever happens from this point on, whatever you do with your life after this, is better than what you did to our son and our brother. Yeah. And they kept the point. They didn't that, hug her for her. They did it for them. Yeah. They did it for them. That was their closing. Well, um, that on a similar closing. thing, because we were all talking about George Floyd, what do you guys think about, what is his wife or fiance? She said, uh, Made a statement that um she think he wouldn't he would want the people to forgive and he wouldn't want them to be rioting and also she's uh, white so I know we didn't mention that what do you guys think about that I think my opinion is she knows that man better than us yeah I was literally thinking just that she knows that yeah. man's heart better than us and the fact that it was been put out that he was known for doing all this shit in the community. Like helping set up tables and shit for church drivers and different stuff like that. So he was known for that. Can I, in my heart, believe that he would want people not to be riding and to forgive? Yes, I can. But on the flip side of that, as a man, I also feel like he would understand what's going on. He would understand, but he might want people to forgive. So, I'm not going to pass judgment on her statement because she knows that man's heart better than we do. Yeah. I feel like she's probably she, like she's probably right. She she knows it better that she's probably right about that based on the information I'm hearing. But at this point it's it isn't just about him. He was just uh, he just he basically was the, the final ignition on the bomb. Yeah, he was the key that was waiting to go off. Event. And while he may not want this, it's it's not only just about him at this point. Yeah, because I feel like the here's the thing: it's because it's spread it to so many different cities. Like if it was only a Minneapolis thing, then it's like okay, I get it. But people all over, so it definitely isn't just about him anymore. You know? Right. But I feel like right. some people are using his name, saying it's in his name, but it's like. You're doing. They're saying I'm doing this for him, but they're also doing it for all of the others. That's why a lot of these things yeah. that you're seeing reposted well, don't just have his name on it either. Not, they have all of the other names that have been recent issues. They're saying basically this is the last straw. It keeps happening. We need to do something to stop it and make it real. People realize that this is not going away. This is a pattern that keeps repeating itself over and over again. And until we do something, it's not going to stop. Well, not even a week ago, before George Floyd happened, we had another Karen. That bitch called the police on a black man that told her she needed to put his her dog on a leash. That told her no, to no, respect no, 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 the law. Craziness. I fucking forgot about that. Oh my like, god! He didn't tell her she needs to put her dog on a leash. He asked her. Yeah, he asked her, "Can you put your dog on a leash?" He wasn't he the, the fucking law to do it. And then she called and reported a hate crime. Kind of shit. She's is. getting called on tape, lying. Straight line. Cause she's wait, cause she's what? I said she got caught on tape lying. Yep. But what she called a hate crime on what? Because she's white. That's why he called and said it. No, no. no bitch, no. your dog was. He, he, he like said he was biting her or some shit like that. Like, yeah. She called the cops. She called the cops. She, she blatantly told him I'm gonna lie too. She blatantly said I'm gonna call the police to say a black man is threatening me. But yep. she literally weaponized his race thing is, yep. what I was saying was, he had the whole thing on video, so you yeah, see like, her lying on video. Yeah. 
What the, I want to know what the fuck she thought he was doing at that time, too, with the phone. Like, he told her. Like, he's very clearly recording you, yet you're yep. still saying this shit. But that's like, one of those like, that goes, man, let, and it's crazy. Let me take this back to what Justin said. And like I said, not I don't think he really thinks that it's genetic, but that shit the is programmed. Is, is Inherent. Programmed. Heredity. To the point where you think, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm a white woman reporting a black man. I'm going to get away with this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's say for the sake of argument, devil's advocate, that she's 100% not racist. Let's say she truly does fear for her life. So in her mind, she's going to take the fact that he's black and use that to save her own ass. Yep. And you know what's crazy? If she had called them and said, say, like you said, devil's advocate, and said she felt threatened or whatever, but did not say but didn't say by a black man, I'd have been cool. When they asked her his description, if she described him as a black man, I would have also been cool. Yeah. But because when you ask me to describe somebody, not me weapon now. like if you asked me to, if you had never met him, if you had never met him, and you asked me to describe her and kill him. I don't want to offend you. Go ahead, do what you do, baby. It's okay. The, the honest description for me would to be say, "Well, oh well, Kim. Oh no, she's cool. Oh, describe her to me. Well, she's a little short. She's heavy set. I, like, cause I don't call people fat. Like, I'm describe. fat. It's just fine. I know you say it. Like, see, I, and, and that's the crazy part because I know you. I can say you fat. Well, I, I wouldn't I'm describe you to fat. somebody as fat. Right. I would say she's heavy set. She's got this big curly hair. Giant. I would, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm describing to a dude, I'm like, you know, big titties. <laughs> and, you know, I'd be like, cute face, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'll, I'll give my honest description. So if, you, if the cops say, give me a description of, say, Chad. Say Chad threatened me. Well, all of us can do Chad. You can see Chad. You can actually describe me. Wait, you disappeared Mike, again. Mike. Come back, come back. Take your phone. Mike. <laughs> Let me take this. I'm, you asked me to describe Chad. I'm going to say white male because he's white. Yeah. It's a what descriptor. It's a descriptor. Franco. Yeah, white male wears glasses and he says he hates my face. No, 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 Franco. You have to say white male wear glasses, hates your face, and he has no shirt on. And he has no shirt on. That would be <laughs> his description of Chad. So if she had described him to the cops when they asked her to, her description had been different. But the right. fact that she called and her first words out of her mouth was like, "I don't want her being threatened by a black man." Before she even called, the fact that he recorded her that saying, she she "I'm going, going to, to tell the police a black man is threatening me." Make that make sense. That might as well. She might as well loaded a shotgun. Pretty much. <laughs> And that's just, and luckily he had his phone out and 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 like Kim has said earlier in this day and age, it's cameras everywhere now. Yeah, everywhere. So and thank God coming. there is because like yeah. as often as it happens now with cameras and people already knowing because you know people with common sense kind of you know are like, hey, there's camera around. Let me not be you know the prejudiced idiot racist bastard I am. Oh, you would think but, right. You would think, but okay, so even if that only stops like one out of every two, right, or one out of every three, just imagine how many were happening pre-camera that nobody fucking knows about, and how many people... Will Smith put out a quote saying that racism isn't getting getting worse, it's getting filmed. It's It's getting filmed, yep. Pretty much. And I'll be honest with y'all, George Floyd's death would have been ruled as a, um, what do you call it? What's the word? Because I just I just looked it up. Is when you when they when they acknowledge that they killed somebody a justifiable like, homicide. Justifiable homicide. Yes. If it was not caught on camera. Yep. yep. They would have they would have said we're investigating. We're we're doing an internal investigation. We've called in that we're doing this and that. And in about two weeks, they would have been like it was rooted justifiable homicide. But it's on mm-hmm. camera. And that's what stop that's what that through that monkey, that's the monkey wrench. And I think it speaks value when that mayor, oh, when that mayor bad. on camera said the fact that I watched that video and his voice broke and he teared up, he said, This 
it's unacceptable. It's a horror. He said, I demand. He was to the point where he said, somebody needs to be held accountable ASAP and ask for help. And that's when the FBI came in. And when the FBI came in, that's when you knew the spotlight was on that they could not get away with saying, oh, this is just a homicide. We're doing an investigation. They really had to investigate that shit. Hell yeah. And that's why it took two days. They don't, they get in charge. But they said, you know what? He's under arrest. We filing charges. And had they even listed a bell for him yet? No. No. no I haven't heard he was, I'm that. pretty sure they denied it, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Because they know that shit's right there. The fact that somebody, here's the crazy part. Let's take out the fact that George Floyd said, I can't breathe and my stomach hurts. Let's take it out. Let's say he had never said that. The fact that a bystander said, hey, he has blood coming out of his nose and mouth. Right. It should be a full please, stop right there. It said, please just take, you You don't have to have your knee on his neck like check that. Check his pulse. Someone Let that says, up. please just check his pulse. Check his pulse. George Floyd didn't have to say, I can't breathe. My stomach hurt. Other people were seeing it. Hey, and so that cop still down. sat there for nine minutes. Nine minutes. Nine. And I feel like in my soul that George Floyd had passed away at about the five minute mark. Oh, yeah. When people oh, were I, begging I that officer, begging okay. him to check his pulse and to get off of him. And he was do you dead. Know, he was dead long before they picked him up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know he... that when the paramedics got there, when the paramedics got there and they were trying to check him, he still didn't take his knee off his, his neck right away. No, he they didn't. The guy, the there's a video of it. Him to move. Mm-hmm. He, there's he a died. video they really are trying. No. No. No, no, no. no. They, they, he was, they, they pronounced him dead at the dead hospital the because that's what they do. That's SOP. They, they have to. They but pronounced him dead on arrival. But when the first responders get there, they don't pronounce anybody dead. They proceed to try to keep you alive or resuscitate you. They will not pronounce you dead on the scene. No. Because until you get to the hospital and that doctor says, okay, this person's dead, their job is to make is to try to keep you alive. Yep. And I know that from personal experience when I got my back cut open and I sat in the back of that ambulance and I was going in and out and I refused to get an IV because I was being tough. And in all honesty, I hate needles. <laughs> and I was scared of a needle. Back. True story. And it's crazy to even use this as an example. The paramedic, I don't know what the driver looked like, but the two paramedics that were treating me, one was a black guy and one was a white guy. And the white guy was the one back there with me trying to give me the IV. And the black guy was the one, he was like down by my feet. I guess he was getting the gear ready and everything. And I was arguing with the white paramedic and and flashing back, it was pretty comical because he was trying so hard to give me this IV. And he was telling me why he needed to give me this IV. And he may have been one of the sweetest, nicest people I ever met. He was like, please, he's like, my, he said, my job is to keep you alive. He's like, just let me give you this IV. I got to get fluids in you. I was like, no, 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 I don't like needles. I don't like needles. And I would start to nod. And he would snap his fingers. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Come. I think he said, come on, bro. Look at me. I, I just need to give you this IV. I got to keep fluids. I was like, no, no. Uh, I don't like needles. And he was begging. He was doing all the stuff. And the, the, the black paramedic tapped him on the shoulder. He said, hey, hey, let's switch. You take care of this. I got this. Let me let me see. And he goes, all right. He's like, but you got to get that needle in his arm, dude. You got to get that needle in his arm. And the black man was like, I got you, I got you. And he came up and he said, I got to give you a needle. And I said, no, no, no. He leaned in and he said, look, you can sit here with your motherfucking ass trying to be tough because you don't want this needle. Or you can really be tough and take this needle because I know you're not no bitch. And I was like, I ain't no bitch. Give me the needle. <laughs> and I literally I winced up and I cried and I heard the white paramedic say are you serious you really about to cry over a needle dog you got a gash in your back yeah. and I was I was stunned that it's kind of crazy because now I can eat my words a little bit I can understand Anthony's point 
Like, but then actually, I said that I understood your point in the video. I didn't agree with it, but I understood it. In that moment, that paramedic realized that I was just being tough. And so that black paramedic came over and talked to me some kind of way that he didn't know. So I can, I can, that's why I said I can understand you. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't agree with it, but I do understand. Oh, yeah. So in my mind, again, it, and I know in order to charge somebody with first or second degree to murder, you got to have all your ducks in a row. Yeah. But the fact that when those first responders got there, whether they were white or black, their job was to keep him alive. And the fact that they asked that officer to mm-hmm. get the fuck off of him. Mm-hmm. And he still kept him pinned yeah. down with his knee for an extended period of time while they were trying to resuscitate or just check him or keep him alive. That right there, for that me, intent. would push that up to, even if it ain't showing intent, that was just a clear fact that his life is not fucking important. Exactly. To me. What's important to me is asserting my dominance as a police officer. Yep. Mm-hmm. And again, so I, my power. Yeah, and I didn't get a chance to pop this in there for y'all when Kim was pointing out how that he had had all those different um infractions. He also had been on that police force like for like five months and was off. They didn't specify why he was off, and then he had only been back on that police force for like eight months. So with all the other infractions he had in that little gap there in the short periods of time, you do the fucking math. Yeah. You know exactly now what, why he was What about him. the other thing where um they was actually working at the same place, but it's not uh it's not guaranteed that they actually knew or met each other. You think that yeah, played anything? Seen that that's, too. that's that's still been speculated. That's it's still going on trying to see how true that is. Yeah. Because they say that it probably wasn't him. But it's also saying because of that infraction in time, as Frank was said, that could have been what he was doing on his time off. Right. The, the lady who owned the store that they both worked at, the club that they both worked at, she actually she said, said they it, both they did work for him. Yeah. They, Wait, I, Floyd and the, George and the cop worked together? Yeah, yeah she just so said, she was said George was, uh, was the yeah, they one worked in the outside, one worked in the inside. So she said she can't say that they ever met. But they both worked for her at the same exact time. And she also said there would have been times that they both worked that they would have crossed paths, right. but she can't confirm it or not. Yes. I think that right there, whether it's true or not, whether they knew each other or not, or I think that's eerie. Mm. That's yeah, very it is. eerie. Yeah, I that's think that's true. really eerie that they worked at the same place. Because I honestly don't think that lady would come out and just lie. Okay, did y'all right. touch on about about the um counterfeit bill? Was the fact it, that it he wasn't, wasn't it. the person. No, he wasn't. Cause that's did, y'all, did y'all also realize that that he was under suspicion of trying to pass a counterfeit bill or fake check because he fit a description? But Isn't that always how they get us? It wasn't proven. It was him. And more likely than not, I think it was proven that it wasn't him. Mm-hmm. It was proven that it wasn't him, but that fit the description. That's the same thing that happened with the one we just went through. Well, yeah, Uh, they all look alike, so what's the matter? Yeah. I had two different stories from that. One, that he didn't fit the description. The other one is saying that the people, um, Cup Pong, wherever it was, the original place that he went to and brought something with, when they gave him back change, they gave him a counterfeit bill. When he went to a store later on in the day, that's when they said that he had the counterfeit bill. He went back to the original store that gave him change to add, to confront them about giving him the counterfeit bill, and they was denying it. See, so, I didn't hear that story. I, that's either. another story I gotta I gotta go into and check out and research. And I'm see gonna how. tell you this right now, having worked retail plenty of years in my life, if you get caught with the counterfeit money in your drawer, 95 percent of companies are gonna make you pay that money back out of your salary, it, it, and you're gonna get in trouble for. And they going do. to get in trouble for taking the counterfeit bill to begin with. So the best way to cover your ass is to do what now? Pass it off to somebody else. I, 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 got, I got to check it before you get it. I, I, I got to go. People stay care. I got hit with Yo, that. Matt, Yo, man. good talk to you, go man. Thanks for joining store. us. He's out already. I got hit. I went to a corner store. I went and brought me a cheesesteak. As usual, when you get your change back, you don't. 
Yeah, you take ass shit, you leave with your money. You leave and go eat your damn food. So I put my shit in my pocket. I went to another store. They told me the bill was fake. And then the fact is, when you see a bill and they t- they post to take it, at the same time, I felt the same way. No, this is my bill. I'm taking this shit back. I'm going to go back to the original place that I got it from. So shit like that does happen. Take it and ha- that, that happens more we, often say, than not. They shouldn't even take the money to begin with. If we find a fake, I'm saying, we're supposed to check bills, especially big ones. If they're fake, big ones. These, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, no, we've back. caught. But I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, some we've caught lower bills. and like, we can't accept this. This is fake. Like, we're not. But I'm saying, it. We don't take them. Like, yeah, typically most restaurants, restaurants no longer work there. But we don't. <laughs> yeah, I've worked in restaurants and stuff too. Most cases, it got stricter later on. But it was fifties and hundreds. You check. Then it got to a point where you check twenties, yeah. hundreds, and fifties. So it's like at some point. It'll get to a point where now everyone's suspicious of everybody. So now you check everything from a one on up in most places to where if you get a single counterfeit, you don't even take it. You're just like, yo, you got two options. You either cancel this order or I call the cops. Now, here's my question, though. If if the bill was counterfeit or he passed a, a check, bad check, did that justify... Hell no. no. He could have paid for a million dollars worth of Fuck shit with a bad man. check. That does not justify his death in any way, shape, or form. never lost his life. Take, that's not a violent crime. Again, he should have never been taken out of the car. They should have yeah. took him down to the station, yeah. investigated him there. If anything, confiscate the, confiscate the counterfeit, keep him under watch to make sure he ain't the dude putting out there. Something. But everything that happened did not need to happen. It was unnecessary brutality in every sense of the word just because somebody wanted to stroke their ego because I'm in the uniform. I got the badge. Respect my authority. For real. Respect yeah. my authority. Take, take your Eric Cartman ass on. Say is I'm 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 willing to think, right? So don't don't kill me on this one. But I'm willing to think dude the cop woke up that morning, didn't think he was gonna kill somebody. And I think he was just trying to be that tough guy showing his dominance. But I don't, I, I hope, I don't think he thought he was going to kill him from his knee being on I his wanted, neck. You know, you know what? what? I, don't I don't know think if you he watched woke the video. Up. Did you watch the video of him kneeling on his neck? Yeah, I did. I feel like there's a certain point where in that cop's mind, like I can't say this for sure because obviously I'm not a mind reader. But I feel like there's a certain point where that cop made a decision. And where he made a bad decision. He decided that the world is better off without this guy. Yeah, I agree with you. He probably didn't wake up that morning thinking he was going to kill somebody. Right. But no, I agree with that. I don't think so either. Off that man's neck, there is no way in his mind he didn't think that I'm probably killing this man. Justin, I. I'm about to get off because I'm at a little cookout, but I want to actually say this to what you just said. Wholeheartedly agree with everybody that he didn't wake up in the morning with the intent to kill nobody. But to what Justin said about at some point, he he decided that the world is better off without this guy. I won't agree with that, but I will agree that at some point he made a decision that no matter what anybody else around was saying to him, that he was the authority and he would decide yeah. when enough was enough. Yeah. So it's on one side of that quarter. Either he decided that, you know, the world would be better off with one one less nigga, or you take the race out of it, and he decided that as a police officer, he, was he would determine when enough was enough. Yep. He was punished. Giving he, him he, his own punishment. And that man paid for that, with his, like, that decision with his life. And I'll be honest with y'all. I hope this officer pays for that decision with his life. Facts. Whether it be I death agree. sentence or general population. Mm. Because one way or the other. You're absolutely right, Lee. You know. Nobody has the right to take another man's life, no matter what, no matter what point blank. You're absolutely right. All right. True. We've actually hit a little over two hours. Uh I just want to say personally, I appreciate y'all because I wasn't sure I wanted to do this. Like I said, my heart and my soul still hurt, but 
being able to have you in my life and talk to y'all. I appreciate y'all, and I thank you. Oh, Lex. My son says hi. He's hey, in the hey, hey, hey. What's up? What's up, man? All right, y'all. I got a, uh, I got a bug out on y'all. But uh, right, with I that said, you all too. I think we'll call it. Franco, thank you for your input. I appreciate you very much. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Same to all y'all. I value all y'all opinions, regardless of how heated the conversations get. So yeah. just know that. All right. I'm out, though. I love y'all. Love you, man. man. Love you, too. Time for you, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna. I think I'm gonna call it there. We're a little over two hours. Good show. Uh, let's do this quick outro. Anthony, where can we find you at? I just want to say one thing. I just want to say nowhere do I condone racism or I um agree to it. You know, I'm just I'm like big on like I just don't. Is, I don't stand for it at all. Like I, and there's no way it's justified to me. Um, but yeah, um, you guys could just find me on the, uh, YouTube at a Now Your Mama Knows or Facebook at Anthony L. Lewis. All right, I'm DJ Justin Love. You can find me on all social media at djjustinlove.com. Also check my website justinloveentertainment.com. That's where you can find me at. Eugene, where can we find you at? Nick. Eugene. Oh, he fell he asleep. He had, I'm pretty sure he said he had to go. I think he's gone. In just oh, a couple well, he could have hung up. All right. Imagine not hanging up. <laughs> it sounds like Eugene, let's be honest. Where can we so find you at, Nerdish? Mm, you can find me at Nerdish Girl at Twitch, Nerdish Girl on Facebook, and Nerdish Grill on Instagram because some have to stole my damn name post naked <laughs> pictures. Nerdish Grill, y'all. Static true, you guys want to drop anything? Nope. The only place they'll find me is here whenever I pop in the stream with you, Justin. I found you on Facebook. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course there is. All That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You can catch me on Twitch. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Drew. You can catch me on Twitch, True CSW, whenever J Rock stream in D2 or every Friday and Saturday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being here. This has been the Mighty Jade Empire Podcast. Once again, I I love all of you very much, and I appreciate you all very much. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And now, your mama knows.